Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have understood the concept of resting membrane potential, let us try to understand what is action potential. The name itself defines a lot of things. Action potential. Action means something which is an action, something which is moving. So this is a potential which is moving. So that's interesting, right? So first let us start from the scratch. So action potential, which is also often called as the nerve impulse. Now, whenever we talk about the nerve impulse, we mostly talk about the transmission of impulse. That is the impulse being transmitted from one point to another. Right? So this potential difference is in action. That is, it is moving along the length of the neuron. Now initially, when the neuron is not excited, it has the resting membrane potential. Now what happens when the neuron is excited? Now what do we mean that it is excited? Let us suppose you are standing, nobody is bothering you. So right now the neuron is in resting state and the potential is the resting membrane potential. That which we understood now. Resting state means the neuron is in the polarized state. Now what would happen if the neuron is excited, if somebody touches you or if somebody pinches you, what happens? The neuron gets excited. So what happens? The neuron carry that information to the brain. Now the question is, how is the information carried to the brain? The information is carried in the form of nerve impulses, that is in the form of action potentials. So these action potentials are those type of potential which are actually moving from one neuron to another neuron. Now the neurons communicate by these action potentials. So from one neuron, if this is neuron 1, 2 and 3, so this potential is actually moving from one neuron to another. So that potential difference is actually moving from one place to the neighboring place and so on. Now, the most important question is, how is the action potential generated? So first we have to understand how the action potential is generated. Then we will talk about how it is conducted. Right? Okay. So now let us first try to understand the generation of action potential. When uh, the neuron is excited, how is the action potential produced or action potential generated? Because the neuron is already in deep, already in polarized state. So what happens when a stimulus is applied? That is what we will understand now. Now, when a stimulus is applied to the polarized membrane, polarized membrane means the membrane which was in the resting phase, the one which was in the resting phase. So when you apply a stimulus which is above the threshold value, you all, already know, right? Threshold value means the minimum, bare minimum value that has to be applied in, in order to excite the neurons. So if the value of stimulus, if somebody like, touches you very slightly that you don't even understand that somebody touched you. That means the stimulus is below the threshold value. So when the stimulus is above the threshold value, only then the response will be observed. So what will happen in that case? The voltage gated ion channels will open in response to the stimulus. Now as long as we were talking about the resting phase, we only spoke about the sodium potassium pump, sodium channels and the potassium channels. Now sodium and potassium channels were the passive channels which were always open. Other than that also there are some voltage gated ion channels. So these are also ion channels which allow only specific ions to pass through them. But they are voltage gated. That means they do not remain open always. So they open only by a stimulus, only when a stimulus above threshold value is applied, only then these channels open. Rest of the time, these channels remain closed. So the, when these channels open, there is rapid influx of sodium ions. That means this is how the scenario is. Let us suppose initially in the resting phase, how was it? Resting phase was the polarized phase, right? 
So in the resting phase you can say that it was polarized. So how was it? This was the membrane. So inner side of the membrane had negative charge and outer side of the membrane had positive charge. This was the case for the polarized neuron. Now what happened in the next state? So in the next state the ion channels that is the voltage gated ion channels opened up. So let us suppose on top of the previous channels on top of that there are some voltage gated ion channels will open up and once they open they will cause influx of sodium ions. That means too many sodium ions will start rushing inside. Too many sodium ions will come inside. So what will happen? A lot of sodium ions will be entering inside. A lot of positive charge will be entering inside. Right? So as a result, the polarity will be reversed. Now, another important thing to note here is that the stimulus is felt only in a specific region. Right? Because this membrane is present throughout. Now only a small portion, let us suppose this is the region where the stimulus is present. For example, somebody touched you at a particular point. So only in only the voltage gated channels near that point will get activated. So only those voltage gated channels will open. So the influx of sodium ions will happen only in that particular region. So as a result, a lot of positive charge will come inside. So the inside membrane will become positively charged and also the outside membrane is losing a lot of positive charge because most of the positive ions are entering inside. The, so the outer membrane will get a negative charge right so this is what is meant by polarity is reversed earlier whichever was positive charged is now negatively charged earlier whatever was negatively charged is now positively charged so we say that the polarity is reversed and we say that the membrane is depolarized that means earlier it was polarized now since the polarity is reversed so we say it is depolarized and once the membrane is depolarized, we say that the action potential is generated. This is how the action potential gets generated. Now the question is, how do we know that this is the action potential which gets generated? You will understand it very soon. So you understood this that how the membrane becomes depolarized. Once the membrane is depolarized, that means the action potential got generated. Now this potential difference is nothing but the action potential. Now this potential difference will be will be different from the resting membrane potential because the resting membrane potential if you talk about the value of the resting membrane potential it is somewhere around minus 70 millivolts it is approximately around this value that is the value of resting membrane potential but when it becomes depolarized so a lot of positive charge comes inside so this value increases right like it is it becomes it tries to move up towards the positive side so that means the value increases so now the potential difference which exists between the outer and the inner membrane that is the action potential clear so this action potential is generated only at the site of the stimulus please remember this that this generation occurs only at the site of the stimulus so wherever the stimulus is experienced only at that region the action potential is generated now the question is how the action potential moves from one side to another i mean if we want the information to be carried forward from our hand to the brain so it actually needs to travel that distance so it actually needs to be transmitted through a lot of neurons so right now we are talking about a particular side of a particular neuron so one particular it, it has not even traveled from one neuron to another so how will it travel from one area or one region to another region thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again